Hello everyone, Sonny here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 0. It is episode 25, of course, and I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic today. Today, we're going to be continuing work on our Double Blaze farm that we started in the last episode. And I am just trying to get as much sand as possible because we're going to need a ton of glass. We're going to need a ton of glazed terracotta and stuff like that. So I figured may as well go ahead and harvest a little of this at the bottom of the ocean by the Guardian Farm at the beginning of the episode. So yeah, I'm just gonna kinda go ahead and get a bunch of resource gathering done because we kinda need a few different things for this Blaze Farm. I wanna go into this as prepared as possible. It's been a very long time since I've made a Blaze Farm, uh, let alone a Double Blaze Farm. Never actually done one of those, so it should be a pretty interesting kind of process in today's episode. So if you guys are subscribed to the channel yesterday, you may have seen a new Bug Rock of the Week episode, and in that Bug Rock, I show a very cool little bug, which basically allows you to get corals and seagrass and all that kind of stuff out of water and on dry land, and they don't die, they don't pop off, nothing happens if you give them a block update or anything like that. So on a live stream, I went ahead and did a little bit of, you know, just just a little bit of decoration, just kind of sprucing up the island a little bit. I know it's the undead island. Actually, I just thought about that. It's the undead island. I guess we got to tear all this stuff out. It's not allowed to be alive. Uh, but yeah, it actually looks really cool. I like the little bits of coral everywhere. And what we can actually do is replace the blocks underneath of this coral because it doesn't get a block update and it just kind of stays there. You can have this stuff floating, you can have it do whatever you want. It's a really cool bug. I would highly suggest checking out that Bug Rock of the Week episode if you have not already because this just has like infinite endless possibilities for all of you guys who do building and terraforming and stuff like that. Like it just looks so, so cool. I really, really love this uh, because you know, there's always like those texture packs and shaders that always have like the light breeze kind of effect where all the grass kind of just moves and sways. They usually have that effect on the leaves as well. But now we can have this effect in vanilla survival with just using seagrass. You can make it look really weird and stupid like how we have two different types of seagrass right here. Uh, the standard one tall and then the top of a two tall one. Or you can have just the standard one tall. You can have a two tall out of land or you can have the top of a two tall. So the reason why I'm telling you guys all that is because I kind of restarted the prank war. Well, kind of. It's kind of retaliation. Daphne Elaine may or may not have summoned a Kraken to destroy our ship. So I just kind of targeted her puffer fish i mean you can probably see it but i gave it a little bit of a mohawk using this new kind of floating seagrass trick and it looks kind of cool but it's also super janky because like it's really hard to do <laughs> it's a very tedious little process but i was able to give it more or less a decent mohawk there's a couple pieces missing here and there but you know what that's fine that's just the style every now and again you just have holes going through your mohawk it's a stylistic choice uh, but we also have a little bit of coral here and there a couple of these two tall grasses and i think it looks kind of cool i think this is an improvement if anything and we also have a little bit of signs down here these signs were the bane of my existence for like 20 minutes we were trying to type these signs on a live stream uh sorry your puffer fish is going through a phase at the moment uh, you're in a yellow steampunk pufferfish with a mohawk. No one is going to listen to your authority. That's from the Yellow Submarine song. And uh, those, all of those signs were just from like stream chat because we did this entire little prank on a live stream over on Twitch. If you guys haven't caught our live streams over on Twitch, then uh, definitely come join us. They're really fun. We stream a bunch. We stream like three times a week over there. Drop a follow over there so you get notified. And uh, there's a link down below. Of course, shameless promotion. But yeah, we do random, just random things over there. It's always a good time. So come hang out if you haven't already. Live streams are actually pretty cool. And of course, thank you to everyone in stream chat for giving me ideas and suggestions. This was entirely like an entirely on the fly prank. I wasn't planning on doing a prank in that live stream, but it just kind of happened. Someone said, hey, put a mohawk on the pufferfish. I was like, yes, that is happening. So this wasn't my original intention for all the coral that we gathered in the last episode, but you know what? I think it's a pretty good use. It looks so cool. I love it so, so much, and I'm hoping that the next update doesn't break this. Uh, definitely, definitely use this bug in your world while you can, because it is just such a cool one. It's not something that you really get the opportunity 
need to do all that often so i would say go ahead and do it to your heart's desire uh while you still can in the 1.10 update but I went ahead and I gathered up a bunch of resources for our blaze farms, a whole bunch of glass that we can then dye red later on, and a bunch of red glazed terracotta as well, some fire resistance potions as per usual, and then just some general building blocks, and we also have what should be enough redstone and general resources in the redstone box and also in the box of use as well. Hopefully we don't need any more than that. So at the beginning of this episode, I have a question for you guys. So please do let me know your feedback on this question in the poll in the upper right and also down in the comment section as well. But I'm wondering what you guys think we should do for decoration down here in the mini base. So I have little bits of plans for like the ravine area over there and this kind of wall over here for how we should go ahead and decorate that eventually. But the general theme down here is what I'm kind of struggling with. So me and stream, cat, stream chat came up with a few different ideas for the theme for this lower base. One of them was like steampunk and that would totally go along with Zloy's entire build style up here. That is like the style that he always builds in and he does it very well would be like steampunk. So if we build the lower base in the steampunk style, that would really match the rest of the island. So that'll be in the poll. And then the other one was kind of like a pirate's cove, kind of like run down, kind of, you know, just piratey. You can imagine what pirate stuff looks like. Everyone knows what it looks like. So that was like the second idea. I think that that would work out specifically very well, simply because we have the like back entrance, kind of back alleyway of the ravine over here. We have all these hidden entrances and exits everywhere, so that just kind of goes with the pirate theme, I feel. And also, you know, there's just so much aquatic stuff down here that that just really fits with the pirate stuff. And finally, the other theme that was on the table for ideas was kind of like a ruined cave kind of build, kind of like what I've already started building a little bit on these couple of walls and out here in the ravine as well. And that is just kind of, you know, what you would expect. It's kind of like a cavern, it's overgrown, it's wet, it's dank, it's dark, and it's just kind of like a cavern and a cave. What do you expect? So there will be a poll in the upper right of the video right now with those three options, steampunk, pirate and cave and then probably the fourth option will be other and depending on which one wins the vote and the pool that will be the one that we actually build in the lower mini base in a future episode of truly bedrock so choose wisely because this is actually going to be like built in the world and if you have any suggestions or feedback for additional themes then of course let me know in the comment section down below but without further ado we should probably head out to the double blaze farm and actually get some work done in this episode so here we are at the double blaze spawner we have one blaze spawner and that thing of glowstone there and another one and that thing of glowstone up there and in the last episode we kind of cleared out this area and mocked up how we were going to go ahead and actually you know make this into a farm so this right here is the exact spot that we need to stand on to activate both of our spawners and our kill chamber is going to be right here. It's going to be three blocks wide and we'll be able to reach all the blazes in there and kill them and get all the experience pretty easily. So that shouldn't be an issue. Now, in the couple days since I have made that episode, I've been thinking about how exactly we're going to be making this blaze farm and it's going to be... It's going to be very, very messy. So my original idea was to only use flying machines in this farm. That was the challenge I was setting myself. And I figured that we would need five flying machines. One for this platform, one for that platform, one for that platform, one for that one, and one for that one, totaling five. But the flying machines on Bedrock Edition are actually super, super massive. Uh, at least the two-way flying machines, which is like, you know, the, the ones that you would need for this. So I feel like using only flying machines is gonna be an extremely, extremely messy build. So we're probably gonna have to replace at least one of them, probably this one right here with rails. 
and we'll see how that goes later. But anyway, uh, that's just kind of my pre-build rambling out of the way. Always good to ramble a little bit before you actually build something. That way, you know what you're getting yourself into. Everyone knows what they're getting themselves into. So let me go ahead and actually build up a little bit of the infrastructure, a little bit of the buildings around here, and I will come back once I have something new to show you guys. All right, so a little while later now, and I've kind of planned out the bulk of the Blaze Farm at this point, and got most of the actual building done for the like housing units. Basically just built up a little box around all of the Blaze Spawner. So we got this one up here. I did the kind of tracks for that flying machine did that little track for that little section right there and then i got this side done as well just kind of left these ceilings as nether rack because honestly the new texture for nether rack is so much nicer than the old one the old one was grainy and like just terrible like grinding against your eyes this new one is actually pretty nice so i'm figuring that we may as well go ahead and just kind of leave a little bit of a visible because it just kind of blends in well with the red glass now the reason why we're using glazed terracotta everywhere is actually because we kind of need to so if we go ahead and get our, ourselves a sticky piston and just a lever you can see why we need this stuff in case you're not aware so a glazed terracotta can be pushed of course but it cannot be pulled by sticky pistons or slime blocks or anything like that uh, so that makes it very very useful and very cheap when building with flying machines So the flying machine can fly back and forth underneath this entire area It'll never grab any of these blocks and that just makes it so that we can build out of glazed terracotta instead of out of obsidian So that is why we're using glazed terracotta everywhere. It looks a little bit strange Like I'm not sure if I like that at all or if I completely hate it with my entire soul, but it's it's fine enough for now. So the next thing that we actually need to do is go ahead and get ourselves an actual couple bit of flying machines in here. So I would say we should work on this one first, just because it'll be way simpler than that one over there. So we're gonna get one big flying machine to sweep across this entire floor in here, push all the blazes down into this little trench right here and then we need another flying machine to push them from this area into the kill chamber over here so the flying machines that we're going to be using are the ones from blazing king of course and this is pretty much the flying machine that i've used in like seven tutorials at this point i've, I've used it a lot it's a great flying machine it's pretty much like the only good one on a bedrock edition and i really love it uh, but anyway we now have the launch station and the return station built up as well you might be able to see it right over there but hopefully this thing actually works i have not tested it so let's see if it completely fails uh it looks like it is working perfectly fine that's fantastic so that's gonna fly back and forth and sweep all of the blazes down into this little trench right here uh it looks like the return station is broken there's a dirt for you see that's why i recorded this um Oh, I just built it off. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I built this thing one block too far to the left, so I need to move that over and then fix that flying machine and then build up another one down here. So both flying machines are now in place and these things are working like an absolute charm. You just gotta be really careful when you're working with these things because they do not care if they fling you directly into a lava lake. Like, these things could care less, so... That makes it a little bit interesting, but this one is a little bit extended. I made this one a little bit longer, just so that the return station is a little bit further back there and just plenty far out of the way, because we're going to have a whole bunch of redstone actually right here in the kill chamber for some trident killers, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, this entire thing over here is actually totally done. This place farm, totally done over there. Uh, we just kind of need to work on this one up here. Now, the majority of this one is going to be pretty similar to this one over here. We're going to have one main flyer at the very top layer, a secondary flyer pushing all the guys that land in the trench to this little area down here. And then we just need to figure out how to get them from down here into the kill chamber. So let me get a little bit more work done on this. So here is the main flying machine and this thing works perfectly as per usual. So we have upper flying machines and lower flying machines. Now it is flying machine-ception, flyception, flyception, 
I don't know. Words are hard. But either way, we have a lot of progress done on this farm at the moment. Uh, pretty much about 85% done, I would say. And all we really need to do now is get the blazes that are going to be ending up in this little area into the kill chamber. And I might be able to do that with a flying machine looking at it. We might barely just have enough room, so I kind of want to try it out because I would love to have a flying machine only farm. And I just think that would be the coolest thing ever because it just looks so cool. I mean, look at that. It just looks so cool. Aha, so it does actually work. Very fine. We have like a pretty massive little flying machine right here for just these four blocks of space, but that is perfect. That's gonna push all the blazes that fall down in this little area right into our kill chamber, and it is looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing that we actually need to go ahead and do is wire up all of these flying machines to one central area, because right now we just have a little lever that you know actually powers the piston, and then that launches the flying machine back and forth forever. So I need to wire these all up to one spot, and one of the things thinking we'll do is just have that be a pressure plate system so you have to be standing in this one exact spot of the farm for all the flying machines to actually turn on and start flying if you're not standing right here they're all gonna turn off and hopefully that reduces the chances of these flyers actually breaking because if you unload this area or leave the game as these things are actually flying they're gonna break. That's just how it works. That's how flying machines work on every platform. There's not much we can do about it besides, you know, kind of make some safety systems. So the pressure plate is gonna be my safety system. So I have been getting kind of carried away in this area and that is actually a great thing. I love it when I get carried away because then stuff actually like gets done for once. So that's nice. So right now, I basically am just working on this little staircase. Done. That is good to go. And also have this little mediocre at best hallway around the kill chamber over here. The pressure plate, safety pressure plate is in place as well. So if we go ahead and stand on that, all five of our flying machines will activate. You can see that one's good to go. That one's going. Uh, that one right there is good. That one over there is good. And that one is good too. And it looks pretty cool. I like this farm a lot and hopefully it doesn't get broken uh, when we actually go to test it because I've not done any testing for this entire farm or this general concept of how this farm works. So I hope that the blazes don't just like glitch out and die everywhere because that would be pretty terrible. Uh, so I guess the first thing that we should do is step off of that thing, wait for all these flying machines to stop flying and then we need to go ahead and remove the glowstone around that spawner and around that spawner as well. So what should happen when we remove all of this is we should get, yeah, blazes to spawn instantly. That's fun. Uh, we also got to make sure that we don't break the spawner because that's a thing that can happen. And I've actually done that before when building a farm. Accidentally breaking the spawner is never good. And for spawner number two, yep, blazes instantly. That is exactly what I expected. And that's a great sign. It shows that these things are ready to go for spawning all the blazes in the world. Let's get back out of here. We also need to go ahead and put a little bit of glass above there so no blazes spawn on top of the things and stay there forever. Boom and boom. Good, we are ready to go and these farms are now active. So let's do a little bit of testing and actually see if any blazes do get stuck anywhere in the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and just put down a lever where the pressure plate normally would go and hopefully we don't have any issues with this farm. Well, I can see that I forgot one thing instantly. I need to go ahead and put a pressure plate right there and that should activate that little piston to push the guys back down the hole. So maybe we'll see that right now. Yep, there we go. Piston extends and pushes these guys down to here. And now where are these guys going? Oh, they're going to the kill chamber. Finally, cool. So this thing actually does work. We're, we're getting blazes and it looks like we're getting blazes from both sides as well. Awesome. This thing actually works. That's amazing. I, I love it so much. <laughs> I was honestly expecting so many issues because bedrock but this appears to be working just fine so these flying machines aren't necessarily synced up and it probably could be a little bit more efficient for actually getting them to the kill chamber but honestly that's fine because it's a double blaze spawner as long as they're outside of range of the actual spawner itself 
then they're not going to be causing any issues. And that is so many blazes. That is lovely. Okay, so we do have one issue. That guy got glitched out through that wall block. So I'll probably just go ahead and put an extra layer of uh, the, the glazed terracotta right there. And then hopefully we won't have that issue. But that seems to be a pretty niche case because we have so many blazes in here. And we've only gotten one guy to escape unless there's any more over here. It doesn't look like we have any escapees over there either. So sweet. This is working pretty awesomely. That is so many blazes. Now, what's going to happen when I hit them? Nothing. Okay, cool. So I'm actually free to just like attack these guys. Uh, technically, the kill chamber is not completely done yet. We need to hook up a little bit of redstone, but it is working so well. So the bulk of the farm is actually completely done now, and as you've seen, it runs pretty smoothly. I added a few extra bits of glazed terracotta to the edges there, just to prevent the blazes from ever glitching out. Hopefully that actually helps. It might not, but it's, it's the best I'm willing to do at the moment. So uh, when the farm is actually off, a few blazes will actually end up in the kill chamber just from, you know, randomly pathfinding in here. So that's kind of cool. I mean, they're just kind of suicidal sometimes. That's totally fine. I understand. I understand. But now I actually need to go back to the base and pick up a ton of tridents because we need to work on that kill chamber a little bit more. Back from the base now and I just grabbed a little bit of carpet and also literally a full shulker box of full of tridents because like... Why not? We have like three times as many as this. So we may as well just dedicate those to this cause. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to build on camera right now is actually a little bit of a trident killer. This is basically a fully automatic way to kill mobs and also get the looting effect applied to them and experience drops from them as well. So basically the best way to AFK kill mobs in the game at the moment. So just got a lever right here. We got some pistons over there with some carpet and we're just going to build up a little bit of a clock using a repeater and pretty much just a redstone torch that'll just clock uh, reasonably slowly. I'll put that one on two ticks, maybe three. That seems about the right speed. So uh, did that pig man just walk in here? He did, and he's walking right back out. Bye. <laughs> so when we power that, uh, that should then turn on. Fantastic. Great. That is exactly what we want. And then we're just going to take that redstone signal from this clock and just kind of point that downwards into these pistons right there. And this is really super simple to set up. Just flick the lever, boom, those things, and now clock. That is perfect. So if we go ahead and uh, apparently just activate the flying machines, that's fine. Uh, we'll just get a few blazes in here. Perfect example. And we can throw some tridents on those carpets. I'm just going to place a couple on there. But as you'll see, the, uh, oh god, there's actually a lot of these guys. Do I have any blocks? Thank you. <laughs> as you can see, the tridents are actually, uh, you know, damaging the blazes. We're getting experience from them as well. If we hold our looting sword, then we will also have the looting effect applied to them as well. So this thing actually works pretty well. And it's honestly just a really awesome little contraption for Bedrock. It doesn't work on any other platform. Bedrock is just buggy enough for this thing to work basically perfectly. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't always hit them. I, it's probably messing up because I threw the tridents while the thing is moving. But that's what you get when there's uh, a lot of blazes out here. <laughs> yeah, so we need to uh, repair this a little bit. But as you can see, the actual trident killer itself is really quite very simple. So I guess the noise of all the flying machines isn't really going to be an issue because these guys completely drown them out. Like I'm like, I cannot hear the flying machines at all. And then the tridents drown out the blazes. So there's not really any issue of noise here. I guess you guys better like the sound of tridents though, because that is all you're getting. <laughs> but as you can see, this thing actually damages multiple blazes at once. So it's actually pretty awesome. Uh, there is a slight issue with these guys kind of bouncing back out, but that's fine. They'll get put back in here when the flying machines do another lap. That doesn't really have any effect on the efficiency. And that's only really going to happen when we have a big build up like this. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the fix to that issue of them bouncing out would just be make this thing a block lower. But I like the look of this thing. It is working pretty fantastically. But just from that little like stretch right there, we actually got 18 blaze rods from that one. We got 20 from that one. And we got another 14 from that one. So we just got 52 blaze rods. 
instantly, basically, from holding our looting three sword and letting those tridents do their job. I really like the trident killer, and this is pretty much like the perfect farm for the trident killer. So this took approximately three to four hours to set up, and I think it's a total success. Like this thing, it turned out very, very well, I think. For my first time ever building a double blaze farm and my first time building a blaze farm within like, I don't know, probably a couple years at this point. Last time I did one was Silent Survival, like pretty much mid season of that. So it's been a while and I think this turned out very well. Do let me know your thoughts about this down below. I don't think there's really much else to do here on this project. I'm not gonna worry about the outside. I kind of like being able to see all the redstone and I pretty much cleaned it up as much as need be. And other than that, maybe we'll put some potions over here, like some harming potions or something like that, just to kind of dispose of the blazes. But these guys have not been softened, so it would take several potions to actually do the job of killing everyone. And other than that, I just kind of need to clean up these couple double chests. And this project is pretty much a done deal. Of course, this is a public farm. If anyone on the server wants to use this, then they totally can. Just, uh, you know, make sure that the flying machines are actually all stopped before you leave the farm. Because that would totally break it. And otherwise, I am really happy with this project. I'm still kind of debating whether or not I should decorate the ladder and staircase and actual tunnel at the nether roof going all the way back to the nether hub. And I don't think I will decorate it simply because no one else on the entire server has made a nice looking nether tunnel. So might as well just keep with that theme. I put down a little bit of quartz and nether brick over here just to kind of make this part of the farm look good. but. As for the actual nether tunnel, it can stay ugly for the rest of eternity. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go AFK overnight over here at the blaze farm holding my looting three sword. And then at the beginning of next episode, I will catch you guys. We'll see how many levels we got. We'll see how many blaze rods we have as well. Hopefully we don't overflow this storage. Although that would be pretty awesome if we did overflow the storage. That would be a lot of blaze rods, more than anyone on the entire planet needs. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode of Truly Bedrock. If you did, then of course, let me know your thoughts about this down in the comment section. As always, always curious what you guys think about these episodes. And be sure to vote on the poll and the iCards as well. I do want to know your thoughts on what theme we should build the mini base in because I'm not really a builder person. Any feedback I can get on that would be greatly appreciated. But if you did enjoy this episode, maybe do leave a like as that really does help out the video and the channel significantly. If you're new here, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next episode of Truly Bedrock. And I'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one. Thank you all very much for watching. And then there was silence.